Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro, and today we're gonna to be talking about three of my original creations that I believe put me on the map. I'm very proud of these drinks. As I walk you through them, I'll even share a little bit about the history and the philosophy behind them and why I ended up coming up with them in the first place. The first one that we're gonna be doing is the Kentucky Buck. This cocktail is interesting to me because I came up with this one, I think in late 2008, 2009, back when I was bartending in San Francisco at Bourbon and Branch. It took me a long time to get this recipe down. Honestly, there are versions of this cocktail that have a baron in it. There were versions that had a yellow chartreuse. There were versions that were all over the gamut before it ended up the way that it did. As I was putting the drink together, I ended up finally coming up with a version that I liked, but it was just missing something. And honestly, what that was, was two dash of Angostura. And here's a funny bit of information on that drink. My manager at the time actually didn't really like it, and he thought that it wasn't good enough to be featured on the permanent menu at Bourbon and Branch. But luckily for me, I was actually at the time putting together the menu for Rick House, which was set to open in two months. So I ended up taking that drink and moving it over to Rick House, where it quickly became the number one top seller. But enough about me yip yapping, let's go ahead and make one. First, we start out with two dash of Angostura bitters. Then we add one strawberry. Now if you'll notice, we cut the top off and chopped it in half to make it easier to muddle. Next, we're gonna add three quarter ounce lemon juice. And half an ounce of simple syrup. Now we're gonna muddle up that strawberry. So when we shake it, all the flavors will be extracted into the drink. Now it wouldn't be a Kentucky buck without a couple ounces of bourbon. Now we have the bourbon, simple, lemon, bitters, and of course the muddled strawberry. Now we're gonna give that all a good shake. Now we're gonna to top this mixture with just a bit of ginger beer. Now the drink is done, but we're gonna garnish it with a colorful little lemon wheel to make it look sexy and appetizing. There you go, folks, the Kentucky Buck. Now the next cocktail of mine that we're gonna be making is the Pina Verde. This is a cocktail that was also a long simmer. This drink took a long time to come together. Honestly, it started back when I was working at Rick House. What I started to do was I was floating green chartreuse on top of my pina coladas. And it was just a small float, maybe about, you know, a little short of half an ounce. And I thought it really worked well with the flavors in there. And as time went by, I ended up switching the drink to gin. So it was like a gin colada with the float of green chartreuse. But as time went by, I realized that what I really liked about the drink and what really made it unique was the interplay between the coconut and the green chartreuse. So eventually I said, screw, why am I even messing around with anything else? Why am I putting gin? Why am I putting rum in it? Let's just do pure chartreuse. So I upped up the chartreuse to an ounce and a half instead of a half ounce and completely got rid of the base spirit altogether. But since green chartreuse is 55% ABV, it's strong enough to carry the drink on its own. Another thing that I think was really cool about that decision was it took the drink down to four ingredients. And I don't know why, but there's something deeply appealing to me of a drink that only has three or four ingredients because it's a good example of how you can create a lot with just a little. But enough of me waffling on, let's go ahead and put a Pina Verde together. To start out, we're gonna be doing a half ounce fresh lime juice. Next, we're gonna do an ounce and a half pineapple. Follow it up with three quarter ounce coconut cream. Lastly, we're gonna be adding an ounce and a half of green chartreuse. Now, if you happen to have a flash blender or a blender at all, anything like that, you can feel free to blend this. However, we're gonna be putting this drink together by whip shaking it. 
That's when we take all the ingredients in the tin, along with some pebbles or crushed ice, and giving it a good shake until all the ice cubes disappear. What that will do though, is get the drink nice and chill and get everything aerated and beautiful. Now that I don't hear anything jingling in the tin anymore, I know that all the ice cubes have melted, the drink is frothy and cold. Now we're gonna go ahead and pour this into our glass and top it with more pebbles. Now I know there's someone out there that's looking at this and being like, oh my God, there's so much ice in that drink. I want more alcohol and less ice. For those people I want to tell them, the amount of alcohol in here and the strength of this drink does not rely on how much ice is in there. It doesn't. Look, the drink did not get stronger. It's the same. The drink did not get stronger. Instead, what all these pebbles are doing are bringing down the aggregate temperature so the more ice we add, the slower it dilutes, the slower it melts. So more ice is actually making your drink better because it's keeping it frosty and cold. And now you can't say that you didn't learn anything today. And for the garnish on this, we're either gonna do a couple of pineapple frond leaves or, you know, keep it classic with some fresh picked mint for aromatics. There you have it, folks the Pinot Verde. Now the last drink that we're making today is a tropical bourbon drink by the name of the Iron Ranger. This is a drink that I came up with for the opening menu at Boilermaker. This drink is a bit of a novelty because with most tropical cocktails, you generally see rum, rum, or more rum as the base spirit. But in this drink, it's actually bourbon, which kind of made it a bit of a novelty for folks who were looking for something to quench their thirst. And the funny thing about this drink is that when I first came up with it, it didn't really strike me as any better than any of the other drinks I've come up with. But as time went by, the drink kind of took on a life of its own and started popping up as dealer's choices or on menus at other bars around the country. Now, one thing I really like about the Pina Verde is that the drink is able to achieve so much complexity with only four ingredients. However, this drink is the exact opposite, whereas this drink has a lot of elements to kind of create the flavor that I was after. Let's go ahead and put one together. To make an Iron Ranger, first we start out with two dashed Angostura bitters. Then we add three quarter ounce lemon juice, followed up with one ounce of pineapple. Next we do a half ounce of simple. And then a half ounce of falernum, which is a Caribbean spice liqueur, flavored most notably with clove and lime peels. Lastly, we're gonna do two ounces of bourbon, but since the flavors in this are so robust, I'm gonna go ahead and use a cask drink bourbon because the extra proof really goes a long way in this drink. Now you can go ahead and swizzle this one if you like, but I'm gonna do a whip shake again to really give the drink a, an added layer of frothiness. Now that we're done, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into a Poco Grande or a hurricane glass, depending on what you wanna call it. Top it with a whole bunch of pebbles to make it nice and generous looking. Then we're gonna garnish it with fresh grated cinnamon and a bit of fresh mint. And there it is, the Iron Ranger. So there you have it folks. Thank you so much for bearing with me as I took a trip down memory lane and told you the stories about how I came up with each of these cocktails. If there's one thing that I want you to take from this, it isn't just the recipes, but it's also how long it took me to come up with each one of these. You know, like as I mentioned with the Kentucky Buck, it took me about three months of playing around with the recipes. With the Pina Verde, shoot, that was like a two or three year process of me playing around with what started out as a Pina Colada with the float of green chartreuse. Basically what I'm telling all of you is be patient with yourselves. Don't feel like you need to create the next, you know, modern classic. Sometimes there will be happy accidents. Sometimes you will just actually put a drink together and just by sheer luck it'll work. But usually 
you'll find after playing around with it for a month or two, shoot, maybe sometimes less, sometimes more, the drink will really come together to the point where you're extremely happy with it. You can make it for your friends, you can make it for guests at the bar. But with that said, thank you all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to muddle that like and subscribe button. And also, if you have any suggestions for cocktails that we should feature on a future episode, by all means, please leave them in the comments. And who knows, maybe it will be featured in a future episode of Cocktail Limelight. And with that said, if you want to delve deeper into the world of craft cocktails, be sure to check out the Bartender at Large podcast, which I host on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else that quality podcasts are found. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.